Um, so, so what we wanted to talk about is what we've done uh, on the switching side, right? And this was a question some of you asked, uh, you know, what, what do we need AI for switching? You know, wh wh why, why do we need AI for switching? And what have we done, right? So again, um, you know, uh, we make bold statements. I think you've, you've heard enough of those today, but I think the product stands for it. And, and you know, uh, what I can tell you is, the, the three Fortune 10 companies, each of which today are deploying or are at least planning to deploy over 30 to 40,000 APs with MIST. All three of those vendors are actually replacing their access switching with Juniper switching, right? That's just at the very top of the pyramid. And there's a lot more other customers that are going from Cisco switching or, uh, or legacy Aruba switching uh, to Juniper switching. And here's why. Right, so so it, it really comes down to um, you know simplified experience. I'm going to actually walk you through. We talked a lot about what AI does for day two operation. I'm going to speak to you about what do we do for day zero, day one configuration, zero zero touch deployment today, and then you know again you know what we've brought for uh, the wired ex wired assurance, uh, the the wired user experience piece, yeah, we're going to bring to bear uh, in, in the demo coming up. And then lastly, uh, there isn't a missed slide complete without Marvis on it, right? So Marvis uh, talks to the wired network as well. So let's, let's jump into it, right? Why do we feel so compelled that this is the industry's best access layer? What is it that three Fortune 10 companies are walking away from their entrenched legacy Cisco switching environments and coming to Juniper. What's the compelling trigger, right? It's so, so I'm gonna talk about the day zero experience first, right? So let's talk about configuration. We had the, uh, uh, if you've read the book, uh, the Thomas Friedman book, thank you for being late. We had the opportunity and the luxury of being late to this market. Right? We saw what network management in the cloud can do for this market, and we turned that into uh, operational flexibility. So let's look at, yep, sorry. Oops, oh, that was my own voice, so my apologies. Um, so let's look at you know, what, um, uh, how do you deploy a university um, uh, sort of a, a campus switching environment um, you know, in a simple uh, template, right? So literally, we define a template for switching at a global level, right? So, so let's say this template, you know, we, we typically define, let's say the VLANs in, you know, specific to a building or a site, right? But the port profiles, we can define, define port profiles. Hey, my AP profile will do these things, right? So I can associate this port profile to, um, you know, to all, all ports that have an AP on it. The IoT profile can look like this, right? So I can actually segment port profiles at a global level. You know, here's what a student profile would look like, and maybe even a, a faculty profile would look like. This is step one. This is where you would start and say, hey, I'm going to do Mac authentication. No problem. I'm going to put it on a, a guest VLAN, quarantine VLAN, whatever. All of that is built in, baked, ready now, right? So, so once I define these port profiles, then we go into two types of deployments. You may have fixed port configurations. No, most people may not, right? If you go into like retail type of deployments, they have this, hey, zero through seven are my point of sale system. You know, in nine to 10, uh, nine through 12 are my AP system and whatever else, right? You can have port ranges and we could basically take a port range and associate with the profile, done, right? Or you could actually have a, a, a rule-based system and saying, hey, all AP, all switches um, that have a certain name, I'm gonna associate uh, this template to. All switches that we can, we actually can give a persona to a switch. So you take, let's say you have 500 access switches on campus, right? You know, one of the universities we're talking to, they have about 250 uh, access switches on campus. You can give it a, a, an access role, a, a profile to that, and you could say, when you see an access switch on my campus, uh, you know, go apply this template, right? Obviously, I understand in a university environment, you live by exceptions. Every science guy and every biology building and every business building, you have to do something different. We'll come to that. But if you do have any kind of standardization, 
we will let you simplify, including, hey, all 4,800, uh, you know, EX 4,300s, uh, um, you know, apply this configuration, right? So this is at a high level. Once you got the, configure, uh, the, the template com configured, then you go in and say, okay, I got this template. Now, let's say I go to Lincoln Hall or a, a Rockwell Hall, and, and I wanna actually take, uh, apply here where I can define my VLANs, and, and apply my VLANs to, hey, within Lincoln, the AP VLAN is this, or the, or the user VLAN is this, or whatever it is. And then actually, you know, potentially you can tweak it and, and add more rules on top of it, uh, basically as either as exceptions that you get appended to. So anything that has a star is coming from a global template. Anything that is um, uh, not is defined locally. Why do we say this is, uh, this is uh, sort of a best of breed and, and better than what is out there in the market? The reason is with, with one template and, and you know, easy flexible uh, options and a role-based persona-based assignment, we're now deploying a, you know, a 10,000 retail store network, not 10,000 APs, 10,000 location network with two templates and some specific uh, uh, you know, parameters uh, per, right? We've dramatically simplified uh, switching uh, configurations in the marketplace. Y you know, yes, there are cloud managed switches. Nothing is as easy and or as, as flexible as this one, right? So then um, we take this to a whole another level, right? We got, we got the, uh, the, the configurations and you can obviously tweak at any level. This is the actual switching dashboard of Juniper Sunnyvale campus. We have 22,000 ethernet ports that are represented in the health here. This successful connects when we first launched wired assurance within the Juniper campus, that was 24%. What does that mean? 24% of the 24% uh, uh, of the time, devices trying to connect to the network either had um, you know failed their radius, wired radius authentication, couldn't get to the service, whatever happened. Over the last uh, four or five months, they methodically fixed you know de removed devices that don't belong and allowed devices that do belong, updated uh, you know credentials, whatever. This simple three-line dashboard represents the health of 22,000 ethernet ports. This is how we believe wired networks should be managed is are they able to connect? Are they able to successfully uh, get to the right place? And you know, throughput is 99%. That sounds great, but what if that, what is that 1%? And we actually found when we launched wired assurance, 22,000 ethernet ports, we found two closets where storm control was kicking in, right? You see a 1% on storm control there. Storm control was kicking in and they're like, wow, why would storm control kick in on a corporate campus network? There should be no ethernet storms uh, happening. Turns out that one closet, actually the thresholds were good for storm control everywhere else in the, uh, in the global Juniper profile. But for that one closet, this was a particular AV closet, they were seeing transient glitches. So once in a while, video was stuttering, whatever, and storm control was actually blocking legitimate traffic, right? And so we were able to find, and this was a problem IT, Juniper IT has been you know, trying to triage for a long time. They, we were able to find fix. Similarly, uh, my, we we're doing a massive rollout like most other enterprises of Microsoft Teams, right? When we launched Teams, we saw this congestion numbers actually come to, uh, uh, come to uh, bear and Juniper actually undertook a massive sort of proper normalization of quas configuration from the edge gateways to the core, to the distribution, to the access layer and actually methodically made this throughput better. This is a very simple dashboard and now at a global scale providing sort of the user experience help and why do we say user? Uh, because it matters if a single port is connected, I'll give you a, a, a bad example, but a real example. Um, uh, you know, MIST actually physically sits on um, the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office. Literally, we sit on a police station in Santa Clara County. We were downstairs barbecuing and some guy came in and swooped, uh, uh, swiped a bunch of laptops and, 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 uh, and wallets literally on top of a police station, right? And we said, wow, we have a video camera for that. We actually have, uh, have a video proof. And turns out 
our video camera lights have been green for three years and um and they were not actually they were port blocked for a long time since we since our it guys put in our one x on ethernet ports nobody cared to actually go look we're a startup uh, um and we're looking at the video service right this thing would have caught that right so there's practical uses of what wired assurance can bring uh in this space so so um, Sudhir, real Sudhir, real quick can you just um remind us what we're looking at is juniper obviously this example and right now you'd get some insight into other switching yeah we do get some insight lee uh, so for cisco switching as i said we do the five vectors we don't do service levels for cisco switching uh, because this does require sort of data uh, that's coming in at, at, at a certain frequency and, and sort of efficacy of data uh, for cisco switches we are able to say, you know, is the wireless VLAN missing on that particular Ethernet port? Won't apply in your case because your VLANs are at the controller level, right? Missing VLAN is not a problem uh, at the edge like that. But if you're a retail location, if if you had uh, missing VLAN, um, you know, across, a th you know, we have, we had about uh, 40,000 AP deployment. We had 39 APs out of 40,000 where they didn't push um, a VLAN to a Cisco switch. We were able to find that. Right, so we have right. insights, not sort of AI and assurance on, on Cisco switches. Sure, let me ask my question a different way. So looking at this particular um, view, would we see anything if we tried to look at, okay, thank you. Not really, no. Yeah, this view is specific to Juniper switching. And Thanks. then one one last, uh, you know, a couple of things. I know I'm gonna uh, hand off to uh, Ryan uh, um, uh, and, and, uh, and Jake. Uh, one more thing that, that is coming uh, with respect to both the port profile configurations for wired switches is we, obviously I spoke about how you can manually assign to port ranges and port profiles. You know, there's uh, another piece that's coming out, which is basically auto automatically detect the, uh, the uh, sort of the colorless ports. Basically, you know, you plug in an IoT camera or a sensor and we will based on LLDP name or OUI or, um, or potentially if you do have a radio server, the radius username and and you know push the persona down based on our dynamic detection except for the radius username you actually don't need a radius server if you're doing it based on oui or LLDP. and this is a pretty cool way where you don't have to have clear pass or ice now for your wired uh, you know port configurations even if you want to do um, you know port assignments based on persona right so this is uh, something cool that's coming up and then um, one last piece around this that is, is truly very, very interesting. Um, uh, Jixing, if I may, if you are unmuted, uh, I'd like you to help address this piece. Yeah. Uh, you know, one challenging problem we face in this, uh, you know, networking world is, uh, especially with switch and ASX is, uh, you know, to determine the uplink port. As you know, people normally use this uh, heuristic knowledge, you know, whether it's a GE port, or FG port, or, you know, LLDP information, this is more static. And from our current uh, cloud visibility, it has only about 30% coverage. Yes, so how about the other remaining 70% of the switch? How do you know the uplink port? And this is also a problem when we talk about graph database, right? Before you want to, before you can build this end-to-end -to -end, uh, topology, you need to know what's the uplink port. So what we are doing here is to use some behavior-based, uh, purely behavior-based by looking at the packets and bytes going through the different ports to automatically determine which the uplink port is. This is a simple example. You can look, there are like seven different ports from this switch. And these are IX bytes going over time. And this actually is uh, very simple because you just uh, simply count the port with the highest traffic. That blue line from G00, which is the uh, uplink port. Yeah, but there's another interesting example. Uh, Sudhir, can you move to the next one? Yeah. Can you just guess, you know, from this one, okay, the answer pops up too. But by just looking at this graph, can you really tell? which port is the uplink port. Because in this case, you can see G000 actually occasionally has even more traffic than other two ports. The reason is because there's the internal traffic going on, you know, does not really go uh, north. 
And the, actually the most interesting, I like this example, is we look at the orange line and the green line. The traffic, you can see the traffic actually interweave, right? Sometimes the uh, orange line stays on the top and they always switch at the same time. This is a very clear indication. This is a dual port actually running in the passive and uh, active mode. You know, so by developing a behavior-based uh, be, um, behavior uh, you know, uplink port detection model, we can actually increase the coverage, heuristic-based coverage from 30% to more than 95% of the coverage to very accurately tell what the uplink port is. You don't have to write down this first. You can change it. We are going to detect afterwards based on the behavior change. Yeah, so again, it, this another small piece of simplicity. Thank you, thank you, Jixing. The purpose of this is just to, you know, recognize, you know, topology historically, you do that, you know, using LLDP or manually. Here we're using more uh, sort of uh, an ML based model for, for that kind of stuff. Again, something that's, that's coming out uh, uh, as part of the wired LAN assurance.